G'day fellas and welcome back to some more 2v2 action. We are back here with Salami who is playing on the English in the color purple. Yes, it is the Wallalol God himself looking to do some classic English plays. Down in the south side playing as the Mongols on the color pink. We've got Beastie Cutie with a beastly spawn today. Take a look at that. What a Mongol spawn is this? Double gold mine under the starting TC. Beautiful forest, berries nearby, Uvu just a little bit to the north, not a bad spawn. Now, this map, of course, is mega random, so if we go have a look on the other side of the map, which uh, is kind of kind of a wild map, not going to lie, we've got Lash, who's going to be playing here as the Abbasid Dynasty. I was going to say as the Delhi, but uh, no, it is the Abbasid Dynasty. They do look very similar. He's going to be in the color green. His teammate towards the south are playing as the Holy Roman Empire. In the orange, we've got Kor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part of a show match series between these two teams. So earlier, we did see these guys play on Dry Arabia. Now we've got them on Mega Random. And uh, we look. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes because we've got interesting spawns here. So one of the things to note about uh, a map like Mega Random is obviously when it comes to this sort of this spawn that you get, it's kind of like the Danube River. If you guys remember the old Danube River, which was a little bit wild, you'd get random islands just spawning in and out like this. Uh, but uh, es essentially, it's the same thing. So we've got some interesting crossings down here for the close spawn on the south side. Uh, so I would expect that we would see players look to, look to be aggressive in the early game in, in making sure that they get walls up here. When it comes to this position at the north, there's a nice safe crossing here for Lash uh, and for uh, and for Core. Over on the other side, though, we've got a double crossing down here, which is going to be very difficult to warn. Hold on a bit. we got five villagers coming out from Salami. Now, keep in mind, he's got English villagers. Now, you might be wondering, why the heck would you... Stable going down as well. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> we're seeing some 2v2 cheese right here, ladies and gentlemen. This this is it. This is happening right now. Wall's coming up to the south, so at least he knows where all those entrances are. Let's ride on board with Core and see if he knows. Now, he knows up, up to the north as well. So, th remember we talked about there's one, two, three entrances. So, he knows how aggressive these these two guys are going to be, especially on the civilizations that they've got. You know, ideally for Core, all he wants to do is he wants to play the HRE. He just wants to do his thing. You know, you guys know how they are. Uh, but... Um, yeah, so the reason why you'd go five villages instead of, you know, four villages or six villages or anything like that is because the English villages have got five damage on their bows, which means that if you've got five of them, that's 25 damage. How much health does a villager have? A villager has got 50 health. So they, they two-shot a villager. So it's essentially like you've got five archers in age one. And I mean, we're pretty early through this game. I'm just going to yeah, there we go. Okay, Lash is the one that, that we've got the, the clock on. So we might stay on board with him. That way we can see it. We're three minutes into this game. Khan already being uh, coming out early. Now, i got to be careful when I say the word Khan. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but I got demonetized for saying the word can't. Uh, I have to be so careful when I say that word. So I, I'm not saying the other C word uh, for the, the YouTube reviewer who may be watching this video after it's been demonetized. I'm saying just C-A-N-T. He can't. He cannot uh, do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be very careful <laughs> with, with the Khan. But now we do see that Mongol villager moving in. Going to be dropping down an outpost. He's also got double horsemen. Now, this is a very cute cheese that we've, we're seeing right here. I love the way that he's using the villagers. Got to be careful underneath that town center. You can see he's going to be diving into the range of the TC. Keep in mind, plenty of range on that bad boy. Eight tiles of range. And uh, and now those villagers just looking back. And in, interestingly for Salami, he doesn't look to be dropping down any outposts of his own. He's got plenty of wood in the bank. If we go take a look over at his side, he's just gathering up wood at the moment. So perhaps he does look to drop down some outposts himself or maybe an early barracks or something like that. But the outpost going to be coming up for beasties. Obviously opened up with early horsemen. He's going to be looking forward uh, to this, this northern position. We do see a bit of a vill run coming up here. Villagers heading up towards that mining camp. And he's going to get scouted out by Salamity, Salamity, Salami. More villagers going to be coming down. He's going to be trying his best to get these walls up. I suspect he's going to be successful. Indeed he is. No blocks coming through today, but those villagers are going to continue moving forward. They look like they've gone the other way, though. So that's going to give enough gold for Core to be able to age up. You can see he's sitting at the moment on 176 gold up the top here. Only He's got 600 wood, though. Or 600 food, rather. Uh, that is a lot of food. Second outpost now coming up as well for Beastie. Lash reaches the second age, so he's going to be able to get up. And we can see those villagers teeing off. Outpost going to be coming down on this straggler tree. Got to be careful not to lose the villagers. You can see how close they were uh, to, to taking shots from the town center. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll tune in on board with Lash and see how he's doing because he needs to get units out and he needs them out ASAP. You can see he's actually, because he dropped the mill down, he doesn't have resources to drop down a lumber camp. Now going to be throwing down a stable of his own. 
the main issue that he's going to have, though, are these outposts, and he needs to try and clear these out. Now, keep in mind, three villagers here gathering up the gold. This is going to enable him to age up, so I, I expect we're going to have an age up coming through from Core very soon. He's going to be so careful, though. Where do you put it down? And he goes for an arc, and this is very greedy from Core. You've got enemy units, enemy outposts in your base. Highly likely that this arc does get punished. It's a good spot, though. Don't get me wrong. Gets the gold, gets the berries, gets the wood line, gets the town center, so that's pretty close to a, you know, an, an 8 out of 10, if I would say. Uh, but the main issue that he's going to have is that with that 8 out of 10 arc, and as we do see a, a, um, a scout going down, is that uh, there's the chance that it does get denied. Uh, so we'll watch to see how it plays out. You know what? I think he might be okay. He should th This back line here should be fine. There's only six range on those outposts, so that'll be okay. But the wall comes in, so this is now going to cause a bit of a wall in on Lash's side. So it means that there's essentially a 2v1 on the south side. Now, Lash is going to be able to find his way in here uh, through through this route. But unfortunately, it's a little bit of a long route if he wants to get over here. And you can see on the minimap that Core is asking for assistance. He's like, yo, help me, bro. What's going on? It's basically a 2v1. It, to be, it, it is a 2v1 right now. And now you've got the, the walls up that's really where it starts to get difficult all of these units need to be over here sieging instead of sieging he's gone for the dock a smart move here from lash thinking outside the box quite literally outside the land thinking about the water smart moves eight villagers gonna be moving back here i'm curious to see what direction core goes he's going to be going for a nice little sneaky lumber camp up towards the north ideally you'd love to even see a, a wall come up here but you know what there's so many villagers out here oh we got the council hall coming down a forward council hall coming down from salami this is going to be the, one of the cheesiest 2v2 strategies that I've seen. Since, you know what? Since the King Ramelos video that Beastie Cutie did, which was one of the best videos of all time, uh, I've got that thing sitting in my favorites. This is going to be up there with, with the lame 2v2 strategies. I would not be surprised right now if Core makes a Reddit post after this game. This is just, this is disgusting. You've got the early Mongol horsemen coming out and just being annoying. The five villagers from the uh, English player just making sure that they can kill any villagers that sort of try their best to come out but now outpost might be uh be accompanied by a couple of villagers as the horsemen begin to race towards it look at salami running for his life the scout's gonna be coming out trying to do a, a little bit of damage as well unfortunately it looks like those villagers are gonna be making it to the outpost one of them does go down at the 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 foot stones the what do you even call that the the yeah i, I guess we'll go the the foot <laughs> i don't even know the foot of the of the council hall but those villagers gonna be jumping back out to the council hall now core at the same time he's reached the feudal age he's going to be going into men at arms so doing the right thing i think this is you know double barracks men at arms is probably the right choice he's got lots of resources in the bank it's mainly food he's got to be worried about but he could even look to pull villages i, I if i'm core right now i would honestly just pull 16 villages and just siege this down i think that's the right play to go because all of the units are up here towards the north you can see it's going to take time for bc to get down there look to try and clear that out and then you can potentially look at uh, at taking a little bit more control maybe even drop down an outpost yourself but it looks like a mining camp could be coming down for a stone outcropping so thinking about a a second town center potentially here from core a little bit ballsy i'll say that much right on board with beastie and see how he's doing deer stones is obviously up stable is out he's probably going to be even thinking about a, a castle age actually we can check up up towards the top no castle age coming through just yet back in the base of salami nothing too crazy going on mill with its wheelbarrow just finishing up now and that age up about to come through we can see the horsemen fighting up against the other horsemen trying their best to hold on but keep in mind we've got age two horsemen here fighting up the up, up against the upgraded horsemen of beastie uh, but now those villagers have finalized and finished that council hall and now the longbow production begins everyone's in the feudal age and slowly and steadily this two western aggressors uh are, are looking to overwhelm at least try and overwhelm over on the eastern side now up towards the north those walls are still both sitting in eight villages still idle i think is he dropping oh he's dropping a dock a super smart move here from core so both players having to drop docks to get over to the other side it's a great investment that that wall has provided but still we see more outposts coming up and the longer that these outposts are alive then obviously the less effective the Arkham Chapel is. You know, we, we talked about this a bit earlier. The fact that Core went for this Arkham Chapel, sure, it's a greedy Arkham Chapel but at the same time it doesn't do anything because of these outposts. There's there's no resources that can be gathered here. You might have well just, you know, thrown down an Arkham back here. At least you're able to, to utilize it there. But now we see some market trading out. Very cute use of the market here. So what's Core doing? He says, well, I don't have enough gold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mine stone and then I'm going to sell that stone for gold and you can see it's not a terrible price obviously it's not the best but at the same time you know it's still pretty decent still pretty decent third outpost coming up on this south side and core definitely in a bit of a difficult spot we'll check up towards the north as villagers continue gathering on the gold mine it still seems like double stable gonna be the the uh, choice here from lash so we've got one player with uh, with double stable the other player with double barracks on the offense though the longbows and the horsemen 
I mean, at, at this point in time, I'm still pretty happy with how Cause defended. I, I I know it sucks, but I feel like going for the mine work probably was the right choice here. And just going right next to the town center. At least that way you don't anchor yourself towards this. And you can see Beastie knows this. You know, th this is classically what you do in the matchup when you're playing against uh, the Holy Roman Empire as China. You need to Barbican the Arkan. If you don't, it's just almost a guaranteed loss. But Villager's going to get caught out of position here. Beastie going to be looking for a nice little raid. Villagers are not going to be able to fight off this one. Core once again going to be heading back to the pavilion. Unit's going to be moving up towards this position. He's got 11-minute arms out. Unfortunately, they're not in the best spot. All of that, that stone does get mined out. You can see Core sitting with 400 stone in the bag at the moment. Villagers need to fall back away from this position. Not going to be able to do it. Instead, looks like the horseman just going to get forced back. He's doing a decent job. But now we've got the battering rams beginning to come down for Salami. So we know back in his base, he's going to have that siege engineering. Also going to be having the plus one through very shortly. Battering Ram making its way. Just chilling out for the moment. Nice little repel here. No upgrades coming through from the Blacksmith just yet for any of these players. Only thing that we've seen so far is that Battering Ram coming out, but it's going to begin working its way towards the Holy Roman Empire base. Now, if there's any base that you probably don't want a Battering Ram, it's the HRE base because... Well, it's got emergency repairs. And you guys know how emergency repairs works. It's one of those classic... Oh my lord, that's a lot of Men at Arms right now. Men at Arms going to be coming in, looking to dish out the damage on the Horseman. Not going to be successful as the Horseman fall back. Men at Arms coming out successfully, but, you know, it, it's so difficult to secure this position. Ideally, what we need to see is the Battering Ram actually was doing some work on the house. Emergency repairs does come through. So picking up that free wood nice and early. Beautiful charge coming in. And the Battering Ram number one going to be going down here. So it looks like Core as well as Lash going to be able to hold on for a little bit longer. They continue pushing out now. The villagers together with the men at arms. These guys only early men at arms. Obviously, no castle age coming through just yet. But the horsemen going to be looking to try and duck, duck, dip, dive. And we see men at arms now coming out from Salami. So we've got the classic mirror, the men at arm horseman mirror. Longbow's nowhere to be seen. Obviously, no spearmen. But we've got an attack over on the other side. I'm not sure exactly what that was. Maybe a little bit of a scout. At the same time towards that front, we can see the men at arms now turning their attention towards the council hall. And perhaps, perhaps we've got two defenders that look to potentially. Regain their advantage of the defender. But now those horsemen continuing to posture around the base. So Beastie looking to try and find some villagers is unsuccessful. He's just going to find a lumber camp instead. A lot of men at arms in this position. Anybody looking to go towards castle at this point? Doesn't really... Actually, I take it back. It's Beastie. Beastie's going towards castle. He's aging up right now. It's going to be the step right out that goes down. He's going to need to probably replace that on the town center. Or just move it over towards a, a larger gold vein. Something like that. You don't want the villagers dropping off at the TC. Uh, but... Uh, a huge amount of uh, of units is going to be able to clean up the council hall. You can see it's he's still making units out of the council hall. I can't help but feel like this is a little bit of a mistake. Actually, he's just snip, he's just sniping off the villagers. Beastie reaches the castle age, and look at this, just sniping the villagers. So damn cute coming from Salami right now. This is beautiful. Manages to take out another villager. The men at arms just in, in another world at this point in time. And once again, Lash looking to try and clean this up, but you can see he's just uh, not really... It, it, it's definitely tough right now, but finally looking to clear this out. Villagers turning their attention towards that outpost. It feels like they do barely any damage. Look at the damage that comes down. You know what? Give villagers like plus 10 versus outpost. They get plus 2 versus siege. Give them plus 10 versus outpost. That is a change I could get behind. I feel like that would just that would just change the way the game is played. But uh, villagers still going to be successful, unfortunately. So many of them getting cleaned up. We see, what, three at least on the ground? Men at arms getting their torches out. Beastie trying to hold on. Unfortunately, it looks like Salami's nowhere to be seen at this point in time. And they're going to continue working towards these outposts. And with this, looking to try and clear up this position on the Ark. And at the same time, over towards the other side of the map, we've got horsemen looking to come and raid down. Lash, multi, multi-talented, multi-talented fighting on multiple fronts. Outposts are going to go down. Villagers nowhere to be seen. And unfortunately, it means the outpost, for the forward outpost here from the western team is going to get shut down but remember remember we've got beastie who is now in the castle age and that means lancers baby double lancer production uh, in fact is that triple lancer production hell yeah triple lancer production men at arms are going to come out core actually going to be dropping farms around the town center he's also got access to the berries knights doing a decent job here of just cleaning up the remaining army from lash lash is going to be trying to connect with the longbows but it looks like the longbows are going to be able to hold on these two guys got to be careful here lash stacking up a fair bit of resources in his own base still yet to clean up this wall towards the north 1500 wall is just preventing all these reinforcements from coming through because it means he has to manually micro across manually micro back 
all the time. And this is just so frustrating to deal with. Had you just had one scout on this for, you know, three minutes, that wall is gone. That wall is completely gone. And it's just one of those things where it's a it's a little bit of a, an over an overlook, you know, it, it, because you, you see that and you're like, oh, I need to I need to do this right now. Well, that, that works right now. But, you know, the problem is that 10 minutes down the track, actually, we can take a look at and see. Uh, oh, I, I've, I've, lo <laughs> I've lost my clock completely. I've got no idea what the time is. This is terrible. I feel like, yeah, this, this is not good. Insert joke here about me missing the bus for school. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, unfortunately at this point in time, BC is looking in an absolutely menacing position. So this outpost rush was very successful, caused a lot of damage. Now, obviously, Salami was there to help out with the five villages. Still, that council hall is doing its best, just pumping out units. But interestingly, we never saw a real cleanup here. So this cheese, this early cheese for 2v2 has worked and has worked very effectively. So now Salami going to be thinking about aging up. We'll head on back over towards his base as we begin to see walls coming up in the middle of the map. You can see just how much he's gone for these walls. Absolute insane amount of walls. Up towards the north, there's another expansion point. Uh, we can see Lash is looking to try and take that island for himself as well. You, you know, when I see Danube River or, or this map, like actually old Danube, I should say, not the new one. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like old school, like when I used to play old school RTS games and there would be an island up in the corner and it would have like, there'd be no space on it, no resources, but I'm like, that's my island. And I'm just going to go take that island and I'm going to build the most insane base over there. I'm going to put photon cannons everywhere. It's going to be sick. And yeah, you know, you, you play four hours of StarCraft 1 with photon cannons at the top of a of, of the huge map and it's it's good times. It's good times. Lash role playing right now as a six year old playing <laughs> playing StarCraft, but unfortunately, he's gonna need more than that to to save them right now because these lances are just brutally going through the base here. He's looking to try and find more village un villages. Unfortunately for him, not a lot. Core sitting on 25 villages at the moment. So Beastie and Salami with double the amount of villages each uh, for Core. If you add it all together, they've got four times the villages that Core's got. But obviously Lash is not doing too bad. 44 villages for him. Now it was the, the economic wing that he went with. Culture wing going to be coming up for him. Only the single town center, interestingly. So didn't opt for a second TC at all. We did see that Core was gathering up plenty of stone. So no no stone sending coming off for Core uh, over towards Lash for, for something as helpful as that. But uh, Core remains alive for this point in time. So we, But I think it's about the damage that was done. You know, there was so much damage that was done in that early game and it, it forced Core to stay behind. And as a result... It means that he's in a difficult position now because when these units eventually make their way forward as more reinforcements continue getting picked up, Dow looking to try and pick off a couple of units in the middle. Unfortunately, the plus one ranged armor just going to be very effective here. You can look at the damage that gets done by the Dow against that. I mean, actually, it's, it's still doing pretty decent damage. What, what is that? Yeah, that's 10 damage a shot. It must, oh, oh, it's firing off five. Okay. So it's doing five damage a shot. Dow actually going to go down. A lot of lances coming out right now from Beastie. We're right on board with him. Oh, we got we got the the uh, we got we got the clock back. Uh, we got nineteen lances out for Beastie right now. Core's got the clock now. I love how the game <laughs> the UI. So this is a custom UI for anybody wondering. Uh, it is a custom UI and it, it's bugged with the clock. <laughs> I don't know why the clock shows sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. He's trying his best to get the Regnets up. He reckons he can find a couple relics, scrounge them together. Unfortunately, going to get caught with his pants down. Core going to be in a bit of a tough spot. He loses plenty of villagers down here. At the same time, Lash is nowhere to be seen. Obviously, a lot of his units have already been cleaned up, and now the attention going to be diverted towards that town center of Core. He's going to be trying his best to hold on. Beastie going to be turning attention towards it, and we see the battering ram beginning to roll in, and good game gets called. Core going to tap out, Lash going to tap out, and Beastie Cutie and Salami are successful with one of the most disgusting cheeses we've ever seen in 2v2. I absolutely love it. Fellas, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.